Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're gonna to have a look at Bazillard daggers. Uh, so this type of thing particularly, and then with a slight offshoot into this. So these two Bazillard daggers are from the Todd Cutler range that I do. And this one is an English Italian. This one is a Swiss German. Now they're both Bazillard daggers and they're both constructed very, very differently. So if we talk about the English Italian one, first of all, this one here, it's very typical capital I shape. There's a fantastic example of this in, in the Leeds Armouries, but you see them all over Europe. But you really see them in artwork all over Italy of the 14th century uh, and 15th century, particularly on knights. So they were quite a high status weapon. Now, they're made in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can do it either by slitting down from the main, main portion of the, uh, of the handle section here. You can, you can chisel down and then open these out uh, and then you thin them out, you beat them out, and you end up with a capital I. You can also weld on or braze on a thin bit of sheet steel here. Uh, I've even seen them done uh, with a guard here, which is actually riveted on, slipped over the blade and then riveted in place. So there's sort of a few different ways you can do it. But they're all characteristic in that from what you see of the side is you see a scale tan construction. Now, why these were popular, particularly in England, and in Italy, because there's obviously geographically quite a difference between the two. I really don't know, it's, it's a strange thing. Maybe somebody out there can answer. Sometimes you have fullers here, this one has just got a flat. So it's a nicely detailed piece, showing the scale tang, tang construction, showing the, the capital H grip, uh, which is actually, it's, it's good if you're in close quarters because it, it protects the knuckles a lot. So even if you're punching with somebody, it's almost like having a knuckle duster, basically. Um, so I guess good for those 14th century pub fights. So there we have it. That is the Italian-English Bazillard. Oh, what I would say is it seems to be a slightly lower status weapon in England than it does in Italy. Again, no idea why, really. Now then we have the Swiss-German style. Now this is very characteristic here of just flaring out slightly before the grip. So this one does that as well. So you've got a obviously a pointed blade coming up where it's relatively straight line and then it curves back out again just before the grip here. Then you have the guard here which encompasses the edges of the timber of the grip. It comes up, sometimes you get a, a similar kind of guard set up at the top, sometimes just a flat plate as this one is, uh, then clenched on with a couple of rivets, mainly for the location of it while you're assembling and the whole system is riveted together. So this one, of course, is now a rat tail tang, a whittle tang, it's got a tang coming up the middle that the grip is burnt onto and then the whole lot assembled. So the construction system is, is different. This is constructed more like an eating knife would be of the time. This is constructed more as a sword would be of the time. So you can see from the side there and from the front that they're quite different. Yet they're both called a basilard. Again, I struggle to know the answer to that. I wish I did. One assumes that there is some sort of origin with the, with the city of Basel, uh, because the spelling is often the same. Sometimes it's spent, spelt B-A-S-I-L, like uh, the herb Basel or Basel, depending where you are in the world. Sometimes it's B-A-S-L-E. So there's different ways of spelling it, I guess, in medieval times. Of course, they didn't have a, a joint system. But you've got two knives here, really quite different construction, but both called Basilard. Swiss German tended to be a bit shorter, uh, a bit more um, handy, really. It's, occasionally it's known as a houseware also, um, so basically a home knife. Again, styles similar to this were appropriated later on by the Nazis. So SA and S dagger, SS daggers have striking similarities to these pieces, but that's because, again, of course, they just stole the iconography. Now. The last thing I'll show you here is actually a Todd's Workshop piece. Slightly different, but you can see that the family is really quite similar. The pommel is, is much the same with two locating rivets and uh, pinned construction. Again, it's a rat tail, whittle tail tang coming through. Again, you've got a guard here to protect the wood. Now this time, obviously, it's, it's sloping up. It's kind of a weird thing, but it's actually, it protects your, your hand very well. Now this particular knife, uh, it's often called a dargan, which is just dagger, or, or dolch, um, or uh, Swiss dagger. 
there's a few different names for it. I'm not sure, again, as is ever the way, what the name of the time was. You know, it's very difficult to find out what these things were called. It was probably just big knife, sword, Bob's knife, whatever, you know? Anyway, so that is a Dargan, which is basically a long basilard, often worn as a, a sort of a short sword, really. Um, that is a Swiss German basilard, so again, similar time period, similar construction method, similar appearance, really. And then the last was the uh, English Italian basilard. Completely different construction, often longer blade as well. So there we have it. These two pieces are Todd Cutler pieces. This one is a Todd's Workshop piece. Um, yeah, absolutely characteristic of 14th, 15th century Italy, England, Germany, Switzerland. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>